Hi and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be talking about halo alkanes, how to identify them, how to draw them, how to name them, and some of the common reactions of halo alkanes. So halo alkanes are, the, as the name kind of implies, alkanes with a halogen added. Halogens, of course, are fluorine, chlorine, bromine and iodine, group 17 elements of the periodic table. And the halogen elements themselves are named as secondary functional groups or side chains or prefixes, prefixes to the alkane chain. The alkane chain in this case is actually the most important. And so always the halogen comes at the start of the name. So fluorine is named with fluoro, bro, chlorine is chloro, bromine is bromo, iodine as iodo. This makes a lot more sense when we see it in action, so bear with me for a second. So here is a classic halo alkane. In this case we have a 4 carbon chain, which is here, and attached to that we have two halogens, a chlorine and a bromine. So to name this we're going to start off with our carbon chain. We're going to identify the longest carbon chain, which in this case is very straightforward. We have four carbons, so we are going to call that butane. Okay, but because we've got four carbons, ane because we've got single bonds between those carbons, and the e at the end because there's nothing else going on in this molecule. But we do have these halogens, so we're going to need to name number our carbon chain, so we've got carbon 1, carbon 2, carbon 3 and carbon 4. And so in this case both of our halogens are on carbon 2. So we're going to number these, they're both on carbon 2, we're going to name them in alphabetical order. So B for bromine comes before C for chlorine, so we are going to call this 2 bromo. 2 chloro butane. So always numbers first, then the functional group or the side chain or the prefix. So 2 bromo, 2 chloro, always in alphabetical order. This was a reasonably straightforward halo alkane. Let me show you something else. So here we have quite a different looking halo alkane. Or in this case, it's not exactly a halo alkane. So we're going to look at the longest carbon chain first, and we only have two carbons. So two carbons is F. In this case, we have a double bond between our carbons. So this is going to be ethene. This is why it's not technically a halo alkane, it's a halo alkene. We also have two chlorine atoms. One on carbon one and one on two. So we're going to call that one... 2 dichloroethene. But the other thing to consider here is the fact that this molecule is able to form geometric isomers because it has a double bond which does not rotate and two different groups on each carbon. In this case, the two hydrogens are on the same side as the double bond. They are both down. So we're going to call this cis 1,2-dichloroethene. If one of those was swapped the other way, it would be trans. So always we're systematic with our naming. If we got a name to draw, we would do much the same process. Okay, so let's say you've been asked to draw this wonderful molecule, 1,1,2-trichloroethane. So always, when you're asked to draw, you're going to start off by looking here. What is the longest carbon chain in this molecule? It is F, therefore we have two carbons, 1 and 2. Now we need, also need to look, we have an ane, so that means that the bond between them is a single bond, and an e on the end, so there's nothing else very exciting going on. We can then look 
at the start of the molecule. And here we have trichloro. That means we must have three chlorines on our molecule. And this bit is telling us that our chlorines, we have two on carbon one and one on carbon two. Now all we need to do is go back and fill in the residual hydrogen so that we have three bond, four bonds, four bonds definitely, on every carbon. And there we have 112-trichloroethane. Always use that process, it will work for you every time. Now, when we talk about haloalkanes and alcohols, we also need to consider the degree of substitution of that alcohol or haloalkane. And we describe that as being primary, secondary or tertiary substituted, depending on how many carbons are attached to the carbon atom that contains the halogen. I know that sounds quite confusing. It will look much more sensible when I show you. But the important thing to note is that differently substituted haloalkanes and alcohols will undergo different reactions. Okay, so when we're considering whether an alkane, or a haloalkane I should say, has got a primary, a secondary, or tertiary substitution, what we need to do is first off find the halogen and the carbon it is connected to. Okay, here we go. Halogen and the carbon it is connected to. And if we look at that carbon, then we need to think how many other carbons is that bonded to? Okay, so in this first example, this carbon is only connected to one other carbon. So it is a primary haloalkane. In the second one here, our hydrogen, our carbon, I should say, is connected to two different carbon atoms. And so that is a secondary haloalkane. And finally, this third molecule, we have three different carbon atoms connected to the carbon that contains the chlorine. And so that is a tertiary haloalkane. Now we can also write this in a shorthand. So primary, we write as first degree, secondary, second degree, and tertiary, third degree. Okay, so being able to recognize those is very important and being able to draw them accurately. Okay, so haloalkanes undergo two different types of reactions. The first one, which is definitely the most familiar one for you so far, is a substitution reaction. And substitution reactions occur when an atom, in this case the halogen, is replaced by another atom or group of atoms. Okay, now there are two different substitution reactions that we can get with haloalkanes. We can react with aqueous potassium hydroxide and that will substitute an alcohol group for the halogen. Or we can substitute with some version of ammonia or an alkane. If we use ammonia, we get a primary amine. Sorry, if we use a primary amine, we get a secondary amine, and if we use a secondary amine, then we get a tertiary amine. I know that sounds confusing, particularly given that I haven't yet made a video about amines. However, in all three of these reactions with ammonia or amines, we do need to have very concentrated reagent. It needs to be warmed, and most importantly, it needs to be dissolved in alcohol, not in water. If it's dissolved in water, you get the um, the alcohol substitution instead of the amine substitution. Okay, so conditions become very important. Okay, so let's. Okay, so remember, in a substitution reaction, the halogen is replaced with another atom or group of atoms. In this case, we've got either an alcohol or an amine. So to draw this, I always start off with the basic. Okay, we've got our three carbon chain. 
And on the second carbon, instead of having our chlorine, if the reagent is aqueous potassium hydroxide, then we get an alcohol. If the reagent is concentrated alcoholic ammonia, then we get an amine, a primary amine. Now, of course, you should put hydrogens on all these other spots. I'm really having trouble writing my hydrogens at the moment. So, for the second molecule, I think you can take them all as red. These are actually supposed to be H's, not A's, or funny looking N's, or anything else. Okay, I'm not going to bother drawing them on the second molecule. I think you can get the idea. Now, the second type of reaction that haloalkanes undergo is an elimination reaction. You can think of an elimination reaction as the reverse of an addition reaction. So it takes a haloalkane and it turns it into an alkene. Okay, And it does that by removing the halogen and a neighbouring hydrogen. Now, just like with addition reactions, we can get two separate products, and I'm going to talk about that in a separate video in a minute. But... Right now I just want to go through the basic definition of this and how it applies. Now this reaction is very similar to the substitution reaction, or at least the reagent is very similar to the substitution reaction, but this time the potassium hydroxide is dissolved in an alcoholic ethanol-based solution, not in an aqueous solution. So the definition of an elimination reaction is that we can remove a halogen and a hydrogen from a neighboring carbon. Okay, always from the neighboring carbon. That becomes very important and I'll talk about that in my second video on this topic. So what we end up with, if I take those bits off, I've got my hydrogen still, and I always recommend, as you know by now I hope, that you just draw these bits on. And all we're going to do is where we have taken those two things away, we're going to put in a double bond. Hopefully you will draw one that looks neater than mine, because that is really, really ugly. Let's see if I can do a slightly better job with that. Okay, so we're going to have a carbon-carbon double bond there. And there we have it. So we have turned a haloalkane into an alkene. And that is the essence of a elimination reaction. Now I will talk more about elimination reactions in my next video. Thanks for watching and I will see you there.